So here I have a motor that me and a friend of mine built. Um, the way it all started out was I had an idea, it's probably closer to 20 years ago, and on a concept of how to build a motor that would not have any currents and would have the um, um, ability to pull directly through the coil instead of trying to pull off like a 90 degree kind of thing. Um, so it eliminates a lot of issues that uh, electric motors have. But um, the problem is that it's very hard to build. Um, today, it probably isn't that hard. I mean, now we have you know, 3D printers and all kinds of crazy stuff. So with EDM and all that, it's probably very easy to build if you have uh, access to a lot of these uh, um, machines. So anyway, uh, me and a friend of mine um, built this. Um, he uh, passed away, so I'm trying to go ahead and just put it out on the internet and let people have fun with it and enjoy the, the idea um, of you know, this motor. So <clears throat> over here we have um, uh, one by one by four magnets. They're all in line. And what's going on is that they're all north and north or south and south. And what's going on, here's a coil. And the coil, when you activate it, you're going to have a south and a north on, in the coil. So what's going to happen is it's got a, a full push or a full pull within a whole segment of this magnet. So you're, you're, the pull is awesome. I mean, it's, it's extremely strong motor, um, very strong. Um, and there's no eddy currents or anything, and the pull is direct. So instead of having like in, like in a typical motor, it might be just like you know a very small amount of, of uh, activation. This one's actually going to be from one point to the other point. It's very strong, and I'm using an H bridge circuit to uh, run it. So as soon as it gets through one cycle, it's already ready for the next one. So it's it's just flipping back and forth real quick. Um, we resolve a ton of problems that come with this. You know, activating a coil of this size creates a huge amount of uh, back uh, uh, spikes of voltage um, when you deactivate it. Um, well, we eliminated that using uh, diodes and um, a high farad capacitor, and on top of it, you would gonna, you're going to put a pico capacitor. And as soon as we did that, boom, solved the problem. We were able to run it on just cheap little MOSFET transistors and it was running it with no problem. Where before with IGBTs that were like huge, um, over a thousand volt, 600 amp capabilities and, it, and with a snubber circuit that was designed on it, it would just blow it up within nothing. I mean, it wouldn't even run. We had problems running it past 12 volts, um, things like that. So yeah, we resolved all those problems just with a simple, um, uh, capacitor uh, uh, deals and it worked really good. The, the amount of back voltage was just huge. I mean, it, it, we were melting solders and stuff. But it's but it resolved it by putting those the pico capacitors and stuff on it. Um, so anyway, um, this thing spins, you know, fairly easy. You have the belt going through here, through the middle, it goes down through the table. And there's a dyno that was down there. I already had a, made a video on that. Um, and then um, that's pretty much the motor design. And it just basically, uh, the, the center is empty. There's nothing there. It all goes through a coil. These are one inch coil. So what we looked at is that uh, we played a lot around with magnets and, and um, coils and everything else and uh, try to determine what would be the best winding and what would be the best size of it and what we came up with is to make it the same size as the magnet so one inch was the best for us um, it it helps with the uh, production the the reverse input or however you want to call it of the you know because it's as it is a motor it's also a very good generator and i haven't learned how to eliminate that yet but i don't know if anybody can um, to eliminate the voltage that is being induced into the coil. So, for instance, if you get it started and you're, you're working on your motor, if I put a one amp in here right now, it, let's just give an example of one amp and one volt. If you put one amp and one volt right now in this thing, 
it's going to be awesome. I mean, it, you're not going to be able to move it. It's going to be really strong. But as soon as it starts to turn, as soon as it starts to move, what it's doing is it's producing voltage inside the coil. So that means that if I'm just having one volt over it, I no longer am putting one volt into the coil. I'm just putting one volt over the coil because now it's producing voltage back to counteract my one volt. And that's why we have to increase the voltage, constantly increasing it, even though the amps may not increase by very much. Because we're just still putting only one amp across the coil, but we're constantly increasing our voltage. So what ends up happening is that, unfortunately, your wattage has to increase, even though you're not really putting more current through the coils, but you're still going to have to increase the, the wattage, so the you know, voltage times amps. And um, so anyway, so you're increasing it constantly without really having to put more current. So I was trying to figure out a way around this, and uh, still a lot, of, a lot of tinkering to do. And <laughs> I don't think there's a way, but I've tried even crazy things like using, I was thinking maybe mercury might help out, so I made a mercury wire and stuff, and it had just had way too much resistance, and you know, I'm sure all your scientists people already know what most of the stuff that I do is, you know, might have already had an issue about it, whatever. But um, anyway, so we went from using um, lasers to guide this thing, to activate the H-bridge. Um, we did that, and then we noticed that it, this was not very steady, it's kind of wobbly a little bit, and if the laser hits the, we had like tape on here to give it the distance and everything of on and off. And uh, the lasers would keep bouncing off to the wrong, missing our, our collector. And it would just keep missing it and, and sometimes it just, you know, not be on time. And uh, so we went from that to putting hall sensors. The hall sensors obviously work really good. Uh, it's a magnetic sensor. It'll pick up magnetic fields and we just use that as timing and it works awesome. Um, yeah, it was, uh, I think it was a company called Allegra and they uh, sent me some uh, chips um, because um, they could only sell me uh, 10,000 of them so they just sent me a sample pack which is real nice of them. Um, and uh, um, so we've been using that and it's worked out great, never had an issue with it. Um, so anyway, this, this motor is, is really good, I want to try to make more videos on the concept more, I guess, and uh, uh, to explain any, anything higher and all the craziness we've done. Okay, so another thing that was really interesting is these uh, windings. As you can see, we have a lot of taps on this one. Some of them are just simple like that. So what we noticed is that you have back voltage happening. And so when we were playing around with um, magnets and the, the, the lifting power and all that, it was, we didn't understand a lot about motors back then, so we didn't know about you know, the back production as it moves. So we were thinking, okay, let's just keep doing this. Well, we figured out that yes, the more windings you have, the less wattage you use, and the stronger the, the, the field was to, to pick up something. You know, we were just picking up change or whatever, pounds or whatever. And um, so but we didn't understand the fact that the faster the motor will go, or the, when you have movement versus no movement, it's totally a different thing. You don't have a back production in the coil, so you don't see that increased voltage at the time. So, uh, but what we did notice is the more windings, the more power it put out, but also notice that if you put a lot of windings, it slows it down. It, the magnet lifts it, lifts it slower than versus having less windings would be a higher wattages but lifts it quicker and not necessarily so much more in weight just a little bit spunkier so what we realized that you can double strand coils so if we take two copper wires and strand it together in parallel we still have the number of windings which gives us our strength but at the same time we have the higher current because it gives us the 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 umph and you don't have the back production of voltage is now not doubled. Now it's, it's still like a single strand versus a double strand and it's, so it still gives you that lower back production and voltage but it gives you a little bit higher amps. So it's a little trade-off. So you have to find where your motor, how spunky you want to make it, this and that. It's, it's really cool stuff. So right here, each coil that you see here is only an inch thick. The reason we have it in, encased in this 
is because it's it needed something strong to give because every for every push there's opposite push reaction and stuff so it needed something very strong to keep this coil in there now we have a design in here also where here i believe we're at uh one two three four five six i think we have eight coils in here yeah so i think there's eight coils in here so um we have a design that instead of having it like this you would have coils all around and you would slide it into a solid body and it would just slide in so that way you had coils everywhere one inch away and you would just slide it in and then um, now here I'm just pulling with the belt but imagine if it just would have been toothed so you could use like like gears you know instead of like rollers and you have a gear here a gear there and then you can put it on the, even on the inside and then put an inside hub or a shaft would stick out right here. So that would be all encased and in, in sliding in. Now if you made it like out of titanium or something like that, titanium has very little eddy current. So if you're ever doing a project and you need a metal that doesn't have eddy current, well there you go. Um, it's extremely little. And you know, just like my leg here, that's probably why they use titanium. You can you can uh, go ahead and, and you know if you went through an MRI machine or if you're going through anything like that, it's probably not going to affect it that much. Or like something like copper or aluminum or any of these kind of metals, even though they're not magnetic, but if they get to a fluctuating magnetic field, it's going to turn like red hot. So it's important to not have any current. And um, same reason here. Um, so. Um, yeah, I, I have so much to say and so much to explain on this motor. Yeah, it's just a whole, a whole lot. But I'd like to put something out there for now. And then I'd like to later on just kind of take each thing and just go in pieces and, and try to put it, give more information about how it all works and the advantages of this. And, and the strength is just crazy. I mean, it's really crazy. Um, we activated one coil one time and it was like, I don't know, a couple of watts and I couldn't even budget. Um, yeah, it was crazy. Um, it has a lot of strength and like I said, it's built from a lot of hand stuff. Um, let me show you this. So for instance, this is, this is what's actually holding the magnets in place. And you see there's a... Um, just dowel pins are made out of G10 material. It's like a, I don't know, kind of like a fiberglass kind of stuff. It just puts it together like that. So that's how we put all this together. You had to make it two piece. So we have the coils on here and then put it together. But like I said, a lot of this stuff today, it can easily be made. And um, I mean, it, it, so I ended up having a machine shop actually mill this out of um, um, phenolic. Um, material because it's a very strong and, and uh, epoxy type of material and um, so um, they milled the squares but they couldn't get it square on the ends so I had to file every single hole every corner <laughs> it took forever and this stuff don't file easy and uh, so that was a lot of fun and um, so anyway that's how it that's how it, we built it and so this is what you see right here in, in these sections here is the, the, that point. And then this is some, um, I forgot what material this was. I went to a plastic place that sells nothing but plastics and stuff and the guy advised me on, on the material to try to use it. He said this one's impregnated with uh, uh, some kind of lubricant or something where it would, it would have very uh, low uh, friction abilities. So. Yeah, it worked really good. Trying to get this to be aligned is, you know, it was a lot of fun. And, you know, you can imagine you're trying to put this together and you have all these magnets that are, you know, wanting to push away and you're trying to put all this together. I mean, we were doing straps and, I mean, everything, building wooden jigs to try to keep it aligned. And everything wants to come apart. And then when you finally get it, we have G10 rods going across every place here. So, and, and nylon bolts, and so they try to stay away from metals and stuff like that. So, I mean, we, we really did a, a number on this one. And uh, we can't even tighten it because the, all the magnets, even though they look precise and everything, 
they're just a hair off. You start tightening and it just starts, um, you know, not being too good. And, and all this, uh, the aluminum V grooves, we ended up having to actually do this ourselves because the machine shop couldn't make it even close to roundness that, as much as we did, uh, just playing around in the garage. Um, it was a lot of fun cutting that. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it, 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 it takes a bit to do it, you know, from, our, you know, what kind of tools that we've had and, and everything. So, but I think in today's world, you know, with these really, really precise machines and stuff, I think it could be milled easy. And like I said, I wouldn't do this design, kind of. I would do the, the one where it just slides in. I think that'll be a lot better. We just didn't have that capability to do something like that. But, um, so, and we, plus we didn't know what we were getting ourselves into at the time. <laughs> but, uh, uh, yes, it was a lot of fun. And, uh, um, yeah, I, I, I'll have to make a lot more videos explaining everything. And I'll, I'll try to find some videos that we were taking while we were building it and stuff. And uh, I'll post some of those too later. But I just wanted to have some fun and put, put this out there for now and, and uh, see see what people are thinking about it and I'm sure I'll get some comments. All right, <laughs> have a good one.